you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. It is Tuesday night here at uh, Blue Line Morphs. I felt a little late this week. Obviously, it was Easter. Um, I mean, rats are pretty close to rabbits, so I didn't think it appropriate to feed on Easter. So we fed yesterday on Monday. Um, and then we're going to have to hold off on some of the pairings this week, but we're pretty much not really doing any new pairing, but we might have a new banger mail coming that might actually change this entire season for us. Um, I'll just say that our clown stuff, uh, it's going to be pretty fucking nasty this season, okay? Mm -hmm. Depending on what happens, but we should actually be really good. It's changing a couple breeding plans that I wanted to do, and I'll probably talk about those original breeding plans and why I'm changing them, so forth and so on, guys. But that being said, we did pull those two clutches uh, that are in the incubator, doing absolutely fine. I still want to do the video for you guys, talk about the sea serpent, compared to the wool banks, so forth and so on. I'll be honest with you, at first I was kind of panicking. Um, we'll talk about how we'll, uh, you know, how Mike called me, how Billy called me to talk about this thing. I think it's state of the art, fucking phenomenal, okay? I, I absolutely uh, love it, etc., etc. But we have the two stranger clutches there. We're gonna talk about probably the biggest. Got it. Thanks. We're gonna talk about the biggest lesson, the most important lesson that I learned this season. It has a lot to do with uh, follicle size, growth, the condition of the female, using the ultrasound, getting locks in at specific times, how many locks I need, and when I need them in there. And what I kind of used to think, and what I kind of proved to myself, especially with these two clutches. With that being said, guys, the next clutch we're gonna pull is this girl right here. Okay, I'm really looking forward to it. That is Eve, all right, guys? That is. My super normal, classic, super jungle, normal, freak, pet pine, okay? That is the, my first ever holdback from the 2019 season. Uh, so we're in our fourth year, I guess, closing in our fifth year, give or take, whatever you want to say. But she was bred to our pastel and she banana pie. They were produced about two seasons ago. So that will be hopefully due around April 23rd. I'm really looking forward to that clutch, guys. Um, because, again, it's... I was told in the very beginning of this whole journey, when I first had actually Luna laid eggs, even though I killed all the eggs, Luna started eating again, by the way. Look at two rats we took down this week. So, um, I was told that you're not really a breeder until you produce two animals, breed them together, and then produce essentially a second generation. So that will be our first second, our first second generation blue light morphs. Then of course, guys, we have our pastel clown pie. She just shed out for us. Absolutely ecstatic about that. Our kill leopard clown pie got probably our last lock in. And then, of course, we have our big old banana hat pie that should be shedding her pre lay shed any, any day now, any second now. And a couple other animals going into that, including our pastel spot nose clown bred to our stranger leopard clown. She's going into her pre lay shed. She has to be a part of this video. So let's kind of talk about this, guys. So I'll be honest with you a little bit of a clickbait. Not really, though, because this honestly is a huge, huge lesson that I learned this year. And it's, it's for the good. And I kind of want to make this video to put all of us newer breeders. Um, Mine's at ease on certain things. We're going to talk about it in a second. Before we get into that, let's take a look at Kev's shirts right there. Shirts, gold serpents. Absolutely fantastic. I love the logo. How cool is that? Is that clown pie, too? Of course. Son of a bitch. Yeah, fuck you. Here. Hey, yeah. Last time I panned to you. All right, so. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's get into this video. Do you guys remember uh, last couple times ago that Kev was here to film, we ultrasounded a bunch of our girls. We actually ultrasounded this girl right here, who is our high OD yellow belly fire clown uh, from Ozzy Boy. She's possible super OD, actually. Ozzy told me the other day that he thinks she might actually be super OD, especially seeing her now. Now, we pulled the clutch from her last video, last clutch that we pulled, but we, made, we talked about her in the ultrasounding video. I had made a comment to Kevin that she wasn't the body structure that I'm used to seeing when it comes to females that are grabbing and going to lay eggs. And we're going to talk about this later on in this season, towards the end of this season, uh, why I think everyone should get an ultrasound. Uh, I'm going to compare my seasons with this ultrasound, without ultrasound. I'll be honest with you, if I did not have the ultrasound, a few of these clutches, these two clutches right here, I wouldn't even have thought I was getting just based upon the body structure, how they looked and how skinny they were, long and lanky, etc. Anyway, so I had mentioned that I see five eggs in there with the ultrasound, but I think they might all be slugs. Just because her body structure, although she was bowl wrapping and she was heat seeking here and there and she was laying upside down, she was uncomfortable, and I knew that her follicle growth was growing. I saw those actually five 40 millimeter uh, objects, let's call them, inside of there. She didn't look like the typical 
body structure of a snake that I'm used to that is grabbing. In other words, I went into full panic mode. Me and Kevin were talking about it. I was hitting Matt Foley up. I was talking to Ozzy. I was talking to Mike from Redline. A little bit of panic. Full panic mode. Because I thought, ultimately, guys, I kind of wasted my Stranger Leopard Clown. We know the saga that was involved with the Stranger Boy. And the last thing I fucking want to do is kick out slugs, right? Because at that point, just put a bullet in me and call it a fucking day, all right? But, that... Why, big boy? What are you doing? Here, want to see? Come on. Come here. You're not going to do anything. You're afraid of them. My, my rat killers. I highly recommend if you're feeding rats and you're clumsy and they jump out, get a pit, get a county corso because they will catch them. Yesterday he caught one mid-air. It's pretty cool. Wish you got a video at the same time. Don't wish I That would have been a nice video. Right? Yeah, but all right. Anyway, guys. So long story short, she did not have the body structure I was used to. Talking to everybody. Have you guys ever seen this? She wasn't even cool, uh, heat seeking. In fact, she had a pre lay shed, hung out near the water bowl, and I went into full panic mode thinking, fuck, I'm not gonna get good clutches out of my two higher end clown females, including the OD and she, OD fire and she clown that laid the first stranger clutch of the season. Had, she's a little thicker, but still had a similar body structure, guys, okay? So, in other words, I kind of thought those two girls weren't gonna actually lay clutches for me. There was something wrong with them. Because I'm used to girls looking more like this. Like this banana hip pie that I have that is in her pre-lay shed. Uh, she's kind of out of blue, so she's she's going to lay. Uh, she's going to uh, shed out any second. But look how big and thick that is, right, guys? Let me take a look at, like, this big normal girl here that's going to lay for us. Another big, thick animal. Like, you look at these girls, you're like, you know what? They're going to lay clutches for me, right? They're grabbing. Look how big and thick these animals are, right? There's no ridge on their spine. They're they They're... they're Bigger, they're thicker, they're fuller. They look like they have eggs in them, right? So when they're ball wrapping, they're doing their thing. I have no question whatsoever. Hey, oh, you're going back in here. I have no question whatsoever that girl's gonna lay. Okay, asshole. That's what I got from Gomez. Mm -hmm. Dickhead. Um, I have no question he's gonna lay. This is what I expect the animals to look like. Okay. With that being said, last season, this girl right here, who's a terrible shed, she sheds like shit. This big old pastel pod girl, um, she last season looked big and thick like this, that essentially gave me seven slugs. Okay, guys? So I expected a nice big clutch and got shit. So why am I saying all this? Well, guys, what I learned, hey, look at this, look at this, taking a step further. This is our pastel spot nose clown, okay? This girl right here is in her pre lay shed from the Stranger Leopard Clown, again. She's a little thicker than the other girls were before they laid, but still a longer, leaner snake. And when I ultrasound her, there was eight eggs inside of this animal. That's okay? crazy. Right? So ultimately what I'm trying to say, guys, is every individual snake, every individual situation, don't panic. Okay? Because what I learned is some of these snakes are leaner animals. Some of these snakes are longer animals. Some of these snakes are going to balloon the fuck up, look like absolute gaboons and give you seven slugs. Some of these animals you're not gonna think are gonna give you good clutches. Some are gonna hang out on the cool side where they should be wrapped around after the prelay shed on the heat tape and ultimately kick out six, five beautiful eggs. And the reason why I was panicking was this right here, guys. When it came to our stranger leopard clown, I didn't want to push him too much because what happened last season, right? The retard almost died. And long story short, he's doing phenomenal now. He's like 570 grams. He's eating, he's locking, he's fucking, he's doing his thing. All right, guys? But this is what happened with them. Come over here, Kev. Like I said, these two animals, this is the animal you just saw. This is the first clutch. This is the second clutch for the stranger, okay? I ultrasounded them both on December 30th, right? 2022. And they were both at 26 millimeter follicles. The lock I had gotten previously to that was the first week of November and then the second week of November. Then after that, um, then I ultrasounded him here, and then he wasn't really eating. I was giving him a little time, and I wanted to see what was going on. And once I saw this, I was like, oh, shit. All right, why don't I give them a little bit more time, and I'll get a nice lock in. So then ultimately what happened is I ultrasounded again on 124. Both these animals are both around 35 millimeter follicles. I said, oh, fuck. I kind of missed my window here, playing it safe with our stranger boy. Then I got a lock in the same day I ultrasounded this girl, and then a week later with this girl. Okay, guys? Now... What was happening was, god damn, I'm dripping, Kev. What was happening was, I was looking at the body structure of these, these females, looking at the times I got locks in. So what did I think? I thought that I fucked up, I missed the window, I didn't get enough locks in the time when I needed to get locks in, and that's why these females didn't look big and thick and girthy like I'm used to seeing out of the other girls that I bred so far in my ball python breeding career. 
So ultimately, I thought that those two locks were not enough. I thought that because I got a lock in November, that I ultrasounded about six weeks later, that 26 millimeter follicles, which now in hindsight, I probably got those two early locks in November in around, leave me alone, Diesel, around 15 millimeter follicles, give or take. And then I got the last lock in around 35 millimeter follicles, as we saw. So I panicked. I saw their body structure. I saw when we got two locks in. One I thought maybe didn't even fucking count because it was six weeks before they were around 26 millimeter follicles. And at the end of the day, guys, when we got two locks in, roughly 12 to 15 millimeter follicles, once at mid 30s. And it gave me five beautiful eggs and six beautiful eggs out of animals that ultimately didn't look like they were gonna give me eggs. Again, if I had the ultrasound, I wouldn't think I was getting eggs. They would have surprised the shit out of me, okay? But that's the biggest lesson that I learned, guys, was. Getting locks in at the right time is more important than how many locks you get in. Okay, now with that being said, guys, would I rather get in five locks? Would I rather get and see a girl five millimeter follicles, meaning she's not growing, she's kind of sitting near her spine, those follicles? Would I rather get a lock in there, then 12, then 22, then 30, then 36? 100 fucking percent, okay? But you don't have to do that, and that's what I taught myself. Now, is every individual female slightly different? 100 percent. But what I learned is, again, the, 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 writing, the writing's here, right? You, you can't argue with that. Got to lock in, again, November 4th, November 12th. They were both then ultrasounded at 12.30 at 26 millimeter follicles. I ultrasounded again on January 24th. They were both at 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter follicles. Got to lock in there. Then again, the other female got to lock in a week after that on 131. The body structures did not say they were thick with eggs. I panicked thinking I was getting slugs. I got 11 beautiful eggs out of that. With that being said, we'll take it a step further, guys. I ultrasounded this girl over here. And this girl was sitting, I'll bring her over to you, Kevin. This girl was sitting at 27 millimeter follicles, okay? Clown girl I picked up from Joe from Empire State Exotics. Just a clown, nothing special about her. But she said at 26, 27 millimeter follicles. I thought I got to get some sort of lock in there. We're going to talk about that because I thought, I was always under the impression that they grow to about 20 millimeter follicles, 24 millimeter follicles. They get no spunk. They kind of reabsorb, so forth and so on, guys. So, what I'm interested to see is this. Measure this girl, 27 millimeter follicles. About a week later, I threw in this boy right here. This is our ODYB Fire Leopard Pied Het Clown to produce either some nice clowns that are Het Pied or some nice double heads, all right? Plus, we can ultimately prove out exactly what's in him. We think, we're, we, think we know what it is, but we're going to try to prove that out also. With that being said, if you look here, it is the end of an ovulation, okay? You see her scales all like, kind of spaced out here, Kev? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she okay. ovulated probably early in the week, and I just didn't catch it. But what I'm trying to say is, guys, I measured her at 27 millimeter follicles. About a week later, I got one lock-in. One lock-in. And we're going to see what type of clutches we get out of her. And that's going to prove a huge point. Because also, too, he's only a 14-month-old snake. So we're learning a lot of lessons here. When it comes to pairing our animals, the timing... Follicle growth, so forth and so on, guys. Yes, we all know there's a blueprint you like to follow, but ultimately, guys, we're kind of proving in here. When we got two locks over here, beautiful animals, even though the structures didn't stay there all that big. I wasn't sure they were going to actually lay great clusters with me. I was concerned there would be actually slugs. And this girl right here, well, don't lick me, you nasty bastard. I'm sweating, thinks it's water. Um, and this girl right here, one lock in at 27. She probably had 32 millimeter follicles, got that lock in. And let's see what happens when it comes to eggs with this girl, guys. So that is probably the biggest lesson that I've learned this season so far, guys. Um, I, hope I, I, I hope I kind of explain. Yeah, did I explain that right, Kev? Yeah. Kind of, maybe? Kind of, maybe. We're both kind of dumb. kind of way. Yeah, we're kind of so long story short, Kev's telling me to shut the fuck up in the video. But long story short, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that's the biggest lesson I learned, guys. Not to panic. Trust the process. You only need one lock to get the job done. In this case, two. And just because the body structure of some of these females doesn't say they're big and thick and monstrous. And you see these huge animals laying upside down. 3,500 gram females. Massive ovulations. Things look like fucking boas or retics or something like that. Um, mine look like little skinny garter snakes, guys. I got six beautiful eggs out of them with only two locks. So don't panic. Stay the course. I definitely want to touch on this subject more often. When it comes to using this ultrasound and pairing them, I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with that girl there who got one lock in uh, at about 30 millimeter follicles. We'll see if one job, one lock does the job with her with a 15 month old male at like 750 grams, guys. So move along nicely. Maybe Saturday, maybe next week, we'll learn about the new male I'm picking up. We'll figure that out. But all in all, 
All in all, guys, I'm tired of talking. So I hope I explained that well. That is the biggest thing I learned. Yeah, decent. Decent. All right. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll touch on this real quick. The situation happened before. We don't know about it. I'm a cop. We know I'm a cop. Kev's a cop. Both feel the same way. They should be collared. They should be sued. Um, and they should, without a doubt, um, be ashamed of themselves. Uh, as a cop, there's certain ways to do things. There's certain times you don't have to exactly do exactly what you're supposed to do. If you know it's fucking stupid, right? Um, they should definitely be fired, collared, and uh, sued. And uh, I really hope that happens to them because they are, by all means, not part of our blue line family. Right, Kev? No way. They're pieces of shit. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, I can touch on this in the Patreon a little more, but that's really all I have to say about that. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Be safe. Watch your six. That's it, bro.